please welcome Joey Lauren Adams and Ethan Zuplee. Big round of applause. You know what to do. Welcome, guys. There's microphones. Let's flick the switch. No, no, flick the switch on the microphone. Or else people can't hear you, and that's not why they're here. So welcome, guys. Thank you for spending the time with us. Um, we have quite a few mall rats uh, enthusiasts out there. Nice. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. Have you guys been to Pittsburgh before? I have, yes. yes. My parents met here in college. Oh, really? Yeah. That is very cool. Um, for those who want to ask questions, we're going to set up a line right over there. So I'm going to move over there. But uh, is there a standout moment in the filming of Mallrats that you want to, you want to share? A particular scene that maybe just sticks out in your mind other than yelling at kids? Yelling at kids was a lot of fun. We just watched that, so please, uh, do you want to yell at them? That'd be no, awesome. These are not children. It's no fun yelling at adults. Uh, a standout moment for me was Kevin at one point, um, it's not in the script, and he said to call Shannon Doherty, Brenda, in the, in the middle of uh, a scene, and I did it, and she punched me and called me a dick, and I thought she was very genuinely angry. <laughs> That's the most ingrained scene for me. Well, that is awesome. For you, Joey? I only, really, I only remember one scene that I did. In that. I haven't seen that film in so long, because I don't watch my own films, but... Um, I mean, it would have to be the dressing room scene. Um, <laughs> just because it was just so... Like, Kevin decided, like... he I guess when he was, like, writing the script, like, the studio was like, you got to have tits in there. And so he, like, wrote a scene. And, and then Kevin and I came... We kind of became very fast friends. And then he decided he didn't want to do the scene. He felt bad, which he should. And, uh, <laughs> and so he was like, I don't want to do the scene. And I was like, oh, thank God. And then Jim Jacks, the producer, like, lost his shit. And it was, like, hours of, like, Jim mad, furious, spinning. Uh, and I was like, please, I hope we don't have to do it. And it ended up we had to do it. <laughs> so Kevin tried to make it as, like, gentle and easy as possible. Well, that was nice of him. It looks like we have our first question right here. The rest of you, please come on. We have these people for a short period of time and we would like to grill them on their careers. Hi, I met um, Joey earlier, but I didn't get a chance to meet you, sorry. It's all right. Um, I, uh, it's kind of a two-parter. Um, I wonder what it's like to work with Kevin Smith because he has been a big part of my life since I was born. And I also wanted to ask Joey what it's like to work with Polly Shore, because Biodome is one of my favorite movies, as I said before, sorry, but what's it like to actually like be with, like, is that really who he is all the time? Like, is that like... Yeah, it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's, which surprised me, because for some reason I thought like he's going to be like an hour late to set all the time and not know his lines and not, he's super professional, but he is still that like guy. Oh, but wow. he was on time, knew his lines, like, just super chill and easy. Awesome. That's sick. Thank you. And, and you also wanted to know about working with Kevin Smith. Kevin. What was it like working with Kevin? I mean, obviously, you became best friends, Joey, and he didn't want you He's, to... <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, I mean, like that story you just told, like, he has a sick sense of humor <laughs> and will get you punched. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he's, like... Because my first film was Days and Confused. And Rick's like, he sent us out a letter saying, like, if you don't like your character, change it. Just know it when you get to Austin. And you could improvise and write scenes. And then Kevin's like, no, the, like, the emphasis is on the second syllable of that word. You're saying it all wrong. Like, that's his direction. Um, so he's a little more... There, yeah, much more specific with the writing. The writing is, is uh, very important to him. It's a, it's a like poetry in his head so if it's off it there's a rhythm so you can't add like an uh or a or anything you can't like it just has to be said a certain way yeah it says the yeah. not uh yeah. 
A director who knows what he wants. But he's funny as hell, so he's <laughs> fun to work with. All right, our next question. Hi, my, uh, my name is Jim. My question is for Ethan. Um, one of my favorite uh, shows is My Name is Earl, and Randy was like my favorite character on that show. I just wanted to know, what was your favorite moment as the Randy character? I, I, I really enjoyed singing opera as Randy. I, and I practiced a lot, and I thought I did a pretty good job. So that was fun. That was my favorite moment. Um, I, I don't like birds or small animals in real life. And when the producers found that out on the pilot, the first season had seven episodes where I had to interact with live birds or small animals. And I think back on that very fondly. It's fun. It's a fun memory. But it was really awful at the time. Thank you very much. Yeah. So they enjoy torturing you. Okay. They did. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Peyton. I'm a big fan of you both, um, particularly from the few skew. Um, I have a two-part question. Um, one for both of you. Um, what was it like working in the few skew universe? Because it was kind of it's like, it was de definitely a different type of thing having a few uh, cinematic universe back in the '90s. Um, before the MCU and everything like that. And my second question is for Ethan. Um, what was um, what was it like working on Boy Meets World? Thank you very much. I hope you two are doing well. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think I don't. I think I might be the only character that's been two different characters in the View Askew universe. So I feel like in a weird way I fucked it all up because um, I'm Gwen and and Malrats and then Alyssa. And chasing Amy, um, but it's all. I mean, whenever you get that phone call from Kevin, like, "Hey, I'm gonna do a reboot. Will you come back?" And you know, like, especially the last film he did, where it was like Ben and I got to have like a little bit of resolution. It it was great. It was amazing. Yeah, I also think like when we went to do Mallrats, um, it was very soon after Clerks had come out, and Clerks was super cool and impressive, and so it was exciting to do Mallrats. Um, and I think we all realized, like, some of these characters are overlapping, but there was no universe at that point. And I think it took him many years to establish, like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this much broader thing where all these people live in, in different ways sometimes. So I think when we went to do Mallrats, that wasn't um, something anyone was aware of, except Kevin. And then Boy Meets World? Yes. What did you ask about that, sorry? Uh, just what was, it like, uh, like what was it like working on Boy Meets World? It was very cool. Um, uh, it, that was my first job, and I was like a nervous actor who just tried to do a good job. But everybody was very nice, and, and it, was, it was fun. It was a fun job. Thank you. Both. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and our next question. This one's for Ethan. Um, about how long would you say it took for Willem to see the sailboat? <laughs> I don't know. You know, at the end of the movie, they say he saw the sailboat. I still haven't seen the sailboat, so I don't know that it's happened yet. It's been like nearly 30 years. Really, you stared at it that long, and you couldn't see the sailboat. I can see those things. I didn't see that one. And now people tell me that it's not actually a sailboat, which is super disappointing if that's true. Right, it's the schooner, which I, what, I, Willem did get a dictionary and found out that they're very similar. Very true. Please come on up if you have questions. Um, I do have a question for Joey. Um, any fun memories of working with uh, Adam Sandler? Um, I mean, he's such a, he's just such a nice guy, and I, I know that sounds cliche, but he really is. Um, because I had done Wayne's World 2. I got cut from it, but had, like, it was just kind of that time. And like, it worked with Chris Farley because I did Conehead, so small part. And it's like that whole world. And like, those guys were all like Dana Carvey and um, Chris Farley and David Spade. And they, like, they were all really nice guys, really funny, but it just it felt like they, they were comedians. And so they were always on. So you couldn't just be like, 
how are you doing? It's like, how are you doing? And then there's a joke after. Um, but with Adam, like, he's he's very shy and, and humble and was just, it just felt like, because I think, like, Judd Apatow was on the set. Like, all his friends were in the movie. And he was just trying to make his friend like, he was still just that kid trying to make his friends laugh. Like, he would do a take and not look to the director. He would look to his friends. <laughs> like, did I make them laugh? That, that was the whole thing. Um, but I remember, like, the, one, I can't remember the name, which movie, it was Waterboy. But, like, his films were starting to do better. And while we were shooting Big Daddy, the one came out. It could have been Waterboy, I don't know. But it was, like, number one at the box office. And he came to set, and he was so embarrassed. Because he thought we would all think he was going to be an asshole now. Because his film was number... And he was just so, like, cringing. We're like, Adam, we're happy for you. Like, that's amazing. Just a really nice guy. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for answering our questions today. Um, you both do a lot of comedy movies, but are also great actors. And I would like to know... I'm not saying that doing a comedy movie doesn't take great acting, but I'd like to know if it's tough to transition to doing a more serious role... And if you notice kind of a different reaction, even from fans, when you're not doing a comedy movie that you're more known for. I find um, drama to be much easier than comedy. Drama is just like potentially heightened, but the emotions of life in a situation. And if the situation is contrived, then the... But it's still just the natural emotions that you experience. And comedy... I think has, like, she talked about Kevin's writing, how, it, how it's like prose and it has a, a rhythm. I think comedy, to, to, to some degree, um, re relies on that. And sometimes if you can't hear it, it beca becomes difficult because of that. And, you know, many times, especially in television, if you just say the sentence in the wrong way, it's not funny. And so you have to change your inflections and... and change your rhythm, and that can become difficult. Agreed. Comedy is a lot harder. Okay. Um, and then the, the older I get, I find, like, the less I want to do drama, because you just, like, ugh, there's that scene where I have to cry that we're shooting in two weeks. And then you're like, <laughs> that scene where I have to cry and we're shooting it in I'm five days. I'm bumming that myself scene, out yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> I've got to go sit in my trailer and listen to some sad music. And, yeah, so it's it's kind of like... I did this really stupid, silly show with Billy Ray Cyrus called Still the King, and it was just like, no crying, no, just being stupid and silly and way more fun, yeah. But yeah, harder. Awesome, well, come on over if you have questions. Don't be shy. Again, we have them for a limited period of time. Looks like we have some takers. But, what's that? We're, we're actually recording, so we'd like to get your audio here. While they're coming over, things go wrong on set. It's inevitable at some point. Do you have a memory of something going wrong on set that kind of, you know, just really sticks out that uh, you really had to deal with and it was not easy, but you got through it? <laughs> like every day, <laughs> every set. <laughs> I was just working in Toronto, and um, it was meant to be springtime, and we were going to do a scene where we were hunting the next day. And the night before, it snowed, and it snowed like eight inches. And so when we got to set, they had dudes with flamethrowers out trying to melt, like literal flamethrowers trying to melt the snow. And we were like, okay, we've got like a patch in a parking lot now that's not snowy, but you look around and everywhere is just white. Um, so that, that was something that went wrong a week ago. Wow. Flamethrowers. It, it, it is kind of like, if it can go wrong, it will. Yeah. Um, like, I feel like, like any time like you're doing a, a film, whatever, and you all go to dinner, like that's... Like it's like war stories, but you just end up sitting around talking about like all the shit that's gone wrong. Yeah, you know. Sometimes you have to say like, let's not do that. Right, but let's it's talk easy about something that else. went well. Let's talk but, about something yeah. more pleasant. Well, let's like be politics. positive. Yeah. yeah, be positive about it. Okay, sir. Uh, this is uh, two questions. Um, one, 
Kevin said, you know, Mallrats 2 was going to happen a couple of years ago, and then it didn't end up happening. Have you heard anything about that? And also uh, for Ethan, when you were, I don't know if you did audition for uh, My Name is Earl, but did you know that Jason, or was Jason cast first, and how did that, you know, happen? Uh, the, all I've heard about Mallrats 2 is that I believe Kevin wrote a script. He asked a bunch of people if they would do it. Everybody, from what I was told, said yes. And then the, the rights are tied up at Universal. And that Universal is not saying yes to making the movie. That's what I've heard about Morats. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's something about, like, they would do it, but they wanted domestic distribution and the financiers are like but that's how we're going to make our money back so i think it's that legal yeah yeah they would so. do it they don't want to put up any money and they want a big piece of the profits um and uh i'm sorry what, what was the other thing um when you auditioned for my name is earl did you know were you friends with jason after having making mall rats and did you know that he was going to be like the main actor in the show yes i i knew that and um, you know, sometimes as an actor, you feel very confident and like there's a really bizarre process for doing for actors to become part of television shows. Jason at the time was very famous. He was the lead in, a, you know, om, om, almost famous and Vanilla Sky and big movies like that. And so he they just asked him, please do this. And then for me, uh, I read the script, thought it was very funny. And they said, well, you have to come in on audition. And I said, I'm not going to audition. You have to just ask. You have to just invite me to do it. And they said, no, you really you have to come in and audition. And so I went with Jason to the executive producer's office. And I expected Jason to read the scenes with me to make them really good. And he was like, no, I'm not auditioning. You're doing that with him. And so I, I read it with, the, with Greg Garcia uh, twice and then they were like well now you have to go and do it for Fox and for NBC and get all this approval and I said I'm not doing that um, and then somehow I got to do the show which was wild very cool next question just a quick question for you Ethan did you ever feel like beating up the Easter Bunny in your character <laughs> yeah that fucking guy in the suit was a dick I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I ever saw the Easter Bunny. It was always like, you know, we're standing here and we're imagining there's an Easter Bunny over there. I don't know that I ever saw him. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is a question for you both. Uh, during the movie Mallrats, did you guys get any chance to do any improv or? Because it seemed like with your lines, it seemed so fluid. Like you guys were just joking around with the cast, especially with Jason Lee when he's asking all the questions. The closest I got to improv was Kevin Smith telling me to say Brenda. <laughs> that was as close to improv as I got. It was impro his improvisation that went through my mouth. No, there's absolutely no improvising on Kevin's films. It's Ethan, you've worked with Denzel Washington at least twice in Unstoppable and then Remember the Titans. What was it like working with him? I did three movies with him. Unstoppable, John Q, and Remember the Titans. Um, and I made a joke with him on Unstoppable that we were about to become the next iteration of the Corys, and I never worked with him again. Um, he was very nice. He was a lot of fun to work with. Um, and on... Remember the Titans, he came in and there was a, for sure a big separation between him and the guys who were football players. He was the coach, he was an adult, we were all basically kids, and there was no interaction and no talking outside of um, a scene. If, I, if, I, if, if somebody didn't have dialogue with him, you wouldn't catch them like chatting at the craft service table. Uh, but what was nice was that when I then went to do John Q, he didn't know anybody else. So he like treated me as though I was his best friend, like walked on to set, gave me a big hug. 
in front of a group of people that were just like, I can't wait to work with this guy, and treated them all like he didn't know them, but was very nice to me, which made me feel really great, you know? Thank you. Okay, next question. Yeah, hi, kind of a two-part. Um, when all of the Kevin Smith Askew Universe movies you've done, do you have a favorite like character or just any reason why? And did you get free reign of them all when you were shooting Mallrats? Really? <laughs> I mean, for sure, chasing it. I mean, Alyssa is such a great character, so that's an easy one. Um, wasn't the mall closed? The mall was empty. There was nothing in the mall. It was just a bunch of boarded up shops. But yeah, we had free reign of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could ride your bicycle around the mall if you wanted to. It was pretty cool. Feel free to come on up if you have more questions. Um, you've worked on, both of you worked on a variety of projects. Sometimes at the end of a production, you get to take something home, whether authorized or not. What's the most fun thing you've taken home from a, from a project? I take a lot of my wardrobe home. And um, some of it I'm stealing and some of it I ask for permission for. I don't, I don't like to take off a pair of socks at the end of the day and leave that for the wardrobe gal to deal with. So the socks come home with me every single day. And eventually I'm asked about this um, sock stealing and I say like, well, I just can't leave you sweaty socks to deal with. And I'm not going to waste my time washing them and bringing them back to you. Um, but I've taken home, like, I have Willem's jacket. Um, I have uh, the outfit I wore in American History X. I have the suit that was made for me for Wolf of Wall Street. I take clothes home. But I didn't steal that stuff. I asked for it. Yeah, I, I'm not super sentimental like that. Usually by the time I finish a movie, I'm so sick of all of it. Um, but I do... I can't remember if they, I don't think they did, but like the scene in Chasing Amy, it might be a montage scene where like I buy the painting at the restaurant. That's a scene in Chasing Amy, right? Um, that really happened. Kevin and I were at a diner and I talked them into selling me a piece of art that was on the wall and it made it into the movie. So in a sense, like I still have that piece of art. That's cool. But it's, yeah. That's very cool. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, my question is for both of you. What was the spark in your life that made you know that you wanted to pursue acting? I had friends who were actors as a kid in Los Angeles, and the spark for me was the fact that they didn't have to go to school. <laughs> um... It's a super long story, and I don't know if I can put it in a nutshell. I'll try. I grew up in Arkansas in seventh grade. For some reason, they had all the kids from all surrounding counties go to the same school. So as a result, there were seven different football teams in the school that played each other. And there were seven cheerleading squads. So basically, everybody and their dog made cheerleading more to the story, but I didn't make cheerleader. <laughs> like, me and two other girls. Like, everyone, my sister, her best friend, my, like, everyone, my mom had already bought me the sneakers. So then I got stuck in PE class in this, like, awful, like, onesie zip-up thing, and I was just like, fuck this. Um, so I got a job as an office monitor, and then that's kind of when I got into drama. Because it was like, you know, now I hate cheerleaders and football players, and... Um, so then, like, eighth grade, I was president of the drama club. And that's, then I realized, like, oh, I really love this. And I really feel like this was all the universe pushing me the right way. And then in 10th grade, I had a drama teacher that wrote on a little grade sheet. I'd done this monologue, and she was just like, you are so very talented. I hope you know this. And, like, I still have that. And without her, I don't think I would have had the guts to leave Arkansas and... Did you ever? She came to Sundance. It was so nice. They, they called me and were like, who's the person that most? So they did a whole thing. I had a film at Sundance a few years ago, and they brought her, and it was amazing. It was awesome. 
Did you ever forgive the ball players and cheerleaders for spurning you? Of course, because I feel like I got, I got the better end of the deal. <laughs> We'd agree. Uh, for both of you, if you had to act alongside a farm animal in a major motion picture, which animal would you pick and why? Thank you. I've done it. I did a movie in Snyder, Texas, which is a dry county in the middle of nowhere with a cow and three kids, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> what, 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 what animals are on farms? Chicken. Chick fuck chickens. Definitely like, not chickens. Yeah, like goats, I think, Small they qualify. Bird. She said cows, they're on farms. Cows, I heard, kill a lot of people. Yeah, they're not nice. Not, so. yeah, I don't want to do cows. Okay. Horses. I'll go with horses. No, the goats will ram you. I'll go with horses. Are, will sheep ram you? Fuck those sheeps then. <laughs> a horse. A horse is probably the nicest. A horse, of course. Yeah, or a dog. They have dogs on farms, they right? Do have yeah, dogs. I like dogs. Dogs are good. Our next question. I actually have two. Um, first one is How hard was the transition, Ethan, for you uh, into and out of the year? Uh, remember the Titans character? And also, is there any, uh, for both of you, is there any role that you guys regret ever turning down? Yes. Um, I turned down two, uh, uh, w okay, into and out of Remember the Titans was not hard at all. I had just done American History X, and I really wanted to do something that was the other end of that spectrum. And so I was so excited to do Remember the Titans, and it was not hard to get into it all. I was supposed to do uh, this little horror movie called Tucker and Dale Battle Evil. And th as we were, and it was my movie, and as we were getting ready to shoot, I got locked into a My Name is Earl contract and couldn't do it. That bummed me out because I thought that movie was incredible. And the other one was I was offered a part in a movie called Good Time that the um, Safdie brothers did. And I was just being lazy and said no. And I, and I didn't know who they were or what they, and then they made Good Time, which I thought was pretty great, and was like, I should have just done this movie. So those are my instances of regret. I don't, I don't think... I don't think, I'm, I do, I don't, because you were saying how like television, the audition process is so like, you have to like, go read for the casting director and then you go and read for the director and then you have to go read for the producers and then they pick three people and you have to go read for the network and it's a whole thing. And like, I hadn't got that, but there's a time, like when we first started, like there weren't that many actors in LA weirdly, right? Sure, yeah. I feel like, like, in the days of Confused Audition, like, pretty much everyone that was and acting... Ma and more Mal rats, too. Yeah. Every actor of our age yeah. was there. And it's and like, it so the casting... Yeah, the casting directors knew every actor. And I went through this little phase where I was learning to play guitar, and I would write, like, three songs a day that obviously weren't good, because I was writing three a day. Like, one of them was called Daddy's Dead and Mama's Head. And, like, I would, like, play my guitar for anyone. And that was right when Friends they were casting, and I was like, mm, no, <laughs> right. I don't want to do that. But I don't know that I regret it, honestly. So I'm not saying I, I was offered the role. I probably maybe could have gotten it, but was like, mm. No. Seems like a hassle. What, to be on that All show? the auditions. Oh, it was awful. Yeah, I agree. The, were you at the Dazing and Abused? No. It was awful. Were you at the Mallrats? Yeah, but I, I lucked out. So she's talking about the casting director who's, like, one of the great yeah. casting directors of all time. Um, Don Phillips. Don Phillips. He would have these pizza parties. He would, he would, read, he would read people and audition a bunch of people, and then the people he liked, which were all the cool actors of the time, yeah. our age, he would get them all together and... Everybody would read on a Saturday part. afternoon. On a Saturday it's afternoon. like it's going to be and fun. And he'd serve pizza, so you're like eating pizza and auditioning for various roles yeah. in this movie with other actors. 
awful. I, I, I had a great experience at Don Phillips' pizza party for Mama Rats because he walked out and nobody, nobody's hired. You're all there, and, and he says every role is open, yeah. but he walked out and made an announcement to this room full of young actors. He said every role is re open except Willem. Ethan's playing Willem. And I was like, what? Nice. That's amazing. Nice. So the pressure was off yeah. for that. But it was fucking awful for everybody else. Like awful. Jason Lee was in last place for contention for Brody all day. Right. And then somehow at the end of the day, he just wore Kevin down yeah. and got the part. But like, had they had to make a decision in the morning, it was not going to be Jason Lee. Yeah, it was like days because they would just be like, OK, now you're going to go in and read with read the part of so you had to know the lines for all the characters, like all the females in the film. And then they'd be like, you're going to read Siobhan with these actors and different actors will be reading the different. And then you'd leave the room and this would go on and on, like all day. And like, and you're supposed to just hang out like, it's cool, well, this is fun, but you're nervous as hell. You kind of hate everybody. You, you hate else. everybody. And then they would start coming out and telling people they could leave, yeah. which was just like, thanks, you can go home. And at one point, like I left the days, I was just like, screw this, this is awful. And I left and went and got an iced coffee at 7-Eleven. And then I was like, I should go back. So I went back and then like, day went on it's starting to get dark and there's like a few of us left and like every time the producers would come out you'd go like find a pole to stand like if i could just make it right. to the end and then finally don came out and he was like let's take a walk and i was like oh they're sending me home and he was like you're gonna be in this movie i don't know who right. yet <laughs> but you are gonna be in this movie i was like so i can call my mom and tell her because it was like this is gonna be my first film i was ever in yeah there's so much pressure. It's an and awful Parker movie. Posey already had the role. Right. So we all hated her because yeah, she's her. just sitting there like, you know, yeah. Awful. But I got, I got to miss out on the mall rats. Yeah. Because <laughs> Jim Jacks had told me I was going to be a mall rat, didn't have to go to the audition. But then I got a call and Parker Posey was actually in LA staying with me. And they were like, you're not going to be in it, Parker Posey is. Oh my God. And uh, so then, uh, then turned out Parker couldn't do it. I think they called me to maybe go to the P and I was like, no, hell no. Right. And somehow I ended up with the part. I don't know. Wow. Good you, your guys, uh, negotiation style on parts. Very, very cool. <laughs> we have another question over here. Hi there. Uh, so if you could pick any actor to co-star in a film with, who would it be, and what type of film would you want to be in with them? Um, did anybody see the TV show Mr. In Between? No? Well, I would want to be in the t in a movie about, uh, based on that TV show with an Australian guy that, if you haven't seen the movie, you never heard of the guy. That's, that's my answer. Sorry, it sucks. It's your answer. It's fine. I'd like to do like a Terms of Endearment style film with Deborah Winger. That'd be that cool. Would. Okay, we have another couple questions here. Or Andy Griffith. I'd like to. Ethan and Joey, I got a question for you. How did it feel um, working with Adam Sandler and Johnny Depp? I already answered. I mean, Adam Sandler was great. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Johnny Depp was a, a very nice guy um, who at the time couldn't get on a plane for some reason so I had to drive down to Acapulco which was a really far drive and uh, that's my big memory of Johnny Depp the long drive okay <laughs> our next question hi guys it was uh, great to meet you earlier today appreciate it um, quick question any nicknames from anything you've done stay with you in real life that people notice for you when they see you in real life AKA finger cuffs. I love that one. I did a TV show called Chance on Hulu, which I've gotten called D. That was my name in that show. I've gotten called that a number of times. Very cool. All right, any other questions? Going once, going twice. Well, thank you guys. 
so yeah. much for spending Thank this you time Thanks with for us. having us. Thank you. This was awesome. Be sure to visit them both at their tables. You'll, you'll all be here for the rest of the weekend. So visit them multiple times. Give them lots of money. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah, thank you. Big round of applause. That video was delicious. And good for you, too. I know I'm a doctor. And I'm also poor, which is hellaciously funny because you'll never see a poor doctor. Trust me and subscribe already. Have fun and eat another video.